Chapter 2. Salvation. The world waits for what you'll give them. You might be buying their product you do not need, as it brings more money to their wallet. Many take the word love and stomp on it to fit their agenda, saying, Love everybody, but themselves cheat and steal from people as they make fun of those who live in hardship. They go on social media or out in public and say love and not judge with shouts so all can hear. Then they go back to downgrading the less fortunate or a particular race under closed doors or they proclaim world peace, but their heart is far from the reality of knowing what love is. Here we see true love, where it is not with just words or a bit of action, but only one could be in the compass of God the Father. Jesus said, For the Son of Man did not come to destroy men's lives, but to save them. Luke 9, verse 56. The Lord Jesus, who is the God of all flesh, quote, He was manifested in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3, verse 16, came to save people from the wrath of the Father. For the Lord is holy. He cannot be in front of evil. There is revolting in His sight. God is holy. For no evil can dwell in the midst of Him, as Habakkuk wrote by the Holy Spirit. Your pure eyes and behold evil, and cannot look on wickedness. Habakkuk 1, verse 13. To be a Christian does not mean that you switch gears by yourself and say, Okay, I'll be a good boy or girl now. A Christian is to come to the knowledge of your need for reconciliation, a price paid for your evil. It is a one-time payment. We are, in fact, all criminals, and if we enter the courtroom, we will be found guilty, deserving of eternal damnation, separation from God that loves us. Quote, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3, verse 23. Sin comes on the scene from Adam and Eve as they decided not to listen to what God had told them. The temptation to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil was too great. To be like God as the serpent twisted God's word to fit his agenda and introduce sin, which brought death into a perfect world. Today, we see this trend as it has been since Adam and Eve's time. To be like God as the world would deny Jesus so they can be their own God in our lives. We are cursed into sin, evil lodged in our flesh. We can only be free as someone greater enters our spirit, the core of our heart. Until then, we can cover up our evil by hiding the intents of our hearts with perishing items in order not to hear the conviction of the Holy Spirit, as Jesus desires to set us free from our prideful flesh that hates the Lord. Apostle Paul's testimony was this, quote, O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 7, verses 24. Doing honorable deeds, going to church every Sunday, saying a prayer, but with no intentions of walking with God. This will not keep you away from the ravishness attack of the works of our flesh. Our deliverance can only come from Jesus Christ abiding in you, as you stay in Him. Everybody in their mind at one time or another thinks they have walked in love. However, this unconditional love is not in our own strength or power to obtain it without having a relationship with the wall breaker, Jesus. God's love is way different than man's. Man lives on an unbalanced emotional love that wavers when someone does not text within 15 minutes as we furiously wait for a text back, telling ourselves this is it. I do not love this person anymore. We have missed the mark of love. As we say, you can do whatever you want if it does not affect me. Man does not know how to love as our worth in the world only comes from what you can give them. If we do not give in to the world's demands, they will kick and scream until you say that you are okay with abortion, same-sex marriage, or that all roads lead to God. If we give in to their lies, then we have turned away from loving them and have sat down with the cowards and claimed our worth with the ones that will devour us in the end. Individuals or groups may have threatened you to obey their way and what love is, but is not love being there for the woman that made the sad mistake of going through the abortion and is feeling the guilt of what took place? To be there as AIDS runs rapidly through the gay community? For love is to be there for them in their time of need of pain and sorrow. As the world says, we walk in love, and it is okay to have an abortion or that relationship. Yet when everything goes wrong, where are those who said they love you? Christians have the heart of God. Nevertheless, this does not compare to God, as He always desires unbelievers to trust in Him. For He was beaten with blows by a whip that would take you out in a couple of hits. As razor-sharp bones opened His flesh, His blood covered His body. 
and then to go on the cross to die a sinner's death, though he was sinless. It was because he loved the world. The world says we have love, but they are misguided about what true love is. Jesus gave us the picture, as he bestowed himself for you, and that you may come to trust in him and receive eternal life, a gift paid for by his blood. The Lord Jesus spoke about the commandments as the nation Israel cited, and to this day cite from Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Jesus answered him, The first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second, like it, is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Mark 12, verses 29 through 31. Picture the law as an internal wall. And the only way we can be clean, considered righteous, you must climb this impossible task. A climb cannot reach this unforgiving wall. Not even a ladder can accomplish this task. The only one that can make it over this eternal wall is perfect, holy, no sin in their heart, soul, and mind. Do you qualify? Of course not. Honoring the Lord is an unachievable task, and to walk in love toward people with unconditional love, there is no way to carry it out. Just like climbing the unforgiving wall, you might be picturing about loving the Lord and your neighbor, but both are impossible. However, Christ conquered death. As man is helpless, Jesus brings hope by explaining who can be saved. Quote, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. Luke 18 verse 27. The Lord offers this hope, but since there has only been one to overcome this wall, or to put it biblically, the law, this means that you would have to go through him. No one on this earth, no religion, no billionaire, nor poor person has ever brought redemption. And for that, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, verse 6. Why is it important to know who God is? So you can realize that Jesus is the Christ, God in the flesh, as he has always existed. To compare your worth is to recognize who he is, as the Lord Jesus is our faithful high priest. The eternal God, Yahweh, dwells in the best place as his throne is in heaven. Still, he fills the heavens and the earth, as the Lord says in Jeremiah 23, verse 24. Before the foundation of the world, he knew that he would come down by way of Jesus. For God is love. He is the one that created you, me, and the entire world. He sacrificed himself, taking his wrath and being nailed to the cross, and offered everlasting life to those who would receive him. Your whole life, you are threatened by what is your worth, by being the best wife or the best husband, the best worker around, or are you feeding the poor and telling everyone about Jesus? Are you doing more? Let us not forget that Jesus said, Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, verse 28. If we try to do good things to make us look like a Christian without the Holy Spirit, we are still trying to climb the impossible wall while our works lay on the ground. Quote, like filthy rags, we are all fade as a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, have taken us away, and there is no one who calls on your name. Isaiah 64, verses 6 through 7. Today, you can believe in him, for he is with you. Right now, he paid the price, as you confess that you have sinned, done evil against him, that you believe in his completed work on the cross, and in this, you have his worth. The Holy Spirit placed in the womb, the seed that has been proclaimed since a curse, as God stated to the serpent, quote, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. Genesis 3, verse 15. Here we see that God did not rush into his redemptive work. For the Lord Jesus Christ in dying on the cross was proclaimed since the beginning of creation. Moreover, he had known about having to go on the cross before Adam and Eve came onto the scene. Quote, just as he chose us and him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. Ephesians 1 verses 4 through 5. If you do not know about deliverance in Jesus, then turn to him with all your heart by seeking the Lord in spirit and truth. Jesus said, No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Matthew 6, verse 24. 
for you will see his glory as he will convict, show you that your sin is holding you back from a relationship with him. By his spirit, you confess your need for him as you trust knowing that Jesus paid the price 2,000 years ago on the cross. Quote, for he says, In an acceptable time I have heard you, and in the day of salvation I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 As we confess our need for him, it means that you want the Lord in your life. But do not worry, for he will give you a new heart. For in Christ you are a new creation, and you will see life in a better or clearer perspective. To know that you are his, for he puts, quote, the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 22 By this, quote, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Romans 8 verse 16 You can say the sinner's prayer and then go live your life. But was your heart wanting to know God personally? Or just to make sure you checked off the list to be right with the big man upstairs? Once we genuinely want to know God, then the connection with the indwelling of the Holy Spirit will take place. And you might not feel warm inside, but if his love moved your heart, then you will see him move in your life. No longer do you have to carry the heavy burden of trying to be perfect, but to watch him work in you to do what is righteous. He is our righteousness and our worth in which no one can take away from you as he is more significant than anything that can come up against you. Here is a glimpse of what took place as the prophet Zechariah was shown by the Lord of what was taking place with the high priest Joshua. Imagine being in front of the angel of the Lord. The high priest named Joshua was standing in front of the angel. Satan was there to oppose him. Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. However, Joshua's heart was toward the Lord. And as he stood before the angel of the Lord, the angel said to those around him, quote, Take away the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, See, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. Zechariah 3, verse 4. When we come to Jesus by the Holy Spirit, God himself removes his righteous anger that was upon us. For Jesus took the wrath that we deserve as he was nailed to the cross, yet rose from the dead, since death cannot keep God down. If you have wandered off or have never come to Jesus, know that the Lord has been with you the whole time of your existence ready to deliver you. Jesus gives us a good picture of how much worth you are in his eyes. To those who believe in him, Jesus tells his disciples, the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them goes astray, does he not leave the ninety-nine and go to the mountains to seek the one that is straying? Matthew 18, verses 11 through 12. We have a great shepherd. If I were your shepherd, I would have left you when your heart spoke evil about me and walked away. However, we have a patient shepherd with us and is ready to pardon our sin. Once we come to the shepherd, you will see how beloved you are. For, quote, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over the one sinner who repents. Luke 15, verse 10. It is a countless joy to comprehend how much we are prized, but this would never occur unless Christ died on the cross. Nothing else in this world is worthy enough take our payment of death to rise victorious as a gift for us than the Lord's sacrifice on the cross. The world says, do better, but those in Jesus, quote, it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Philippians 2 verse 13. Coming to deliverance through Jesus Christ is a work done by the Holy Spirit as he draws you to himself. Now you are the Lord's, but it is nothing that you have done, for his salvation is freely given to those who believe. The Greek word for salvation in 2 Corinthians is satoris, that when you first believe, you have deliverance. Quote, Behold, now is the day of salvation. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 2 Not from years from now, but today you are saved, sealed for the day of redemption. That same Greek word for salvation has a noun case genitive, which shows possession. Moreover, God is in control of our salvation. And if he brought us into the deliverance, he will keep you in his salvation. Another verse describes future salvation. For we trust in his sacrifice on the cross and wait to see him. Quote, he has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself, and as it is appointed for men to die once, but after this the judgment. So Christ was offered once, to bear the sins of many. To those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear a second time, apart from sin, for salvation. Hebrews 9, verses 26-28. The Greek word for salvation, satira, as the case noun is 
accusative rather than genitive. We are in Christ Jesus, at his coming. We will be delivered from this tent to a glorious body when we see him. The greatest gift to receive is when we believe, trust in Jesus' work on the cross rather than our empty works. The first book of Corinthians lays it out, what had taken place before we knew Jesus Christ. We cannot know him unless he dwells in a believer. The scripture states, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. Here, you knew of Jesus, and your eyes are open, and see in your sin, and the desire to come to him, for this is the act of love. Quote, because he first loved us, 1 John 4 verse 19. Now with the Holy Spirit living with our spirit, as quote, he was joined to the Lord, as one spirit with him, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 17. Although it is written for the wayward believer, nevertheless, what great truth, how near the Lord himself is close to each believer. We are in him, in the same chapter by stating, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19. In the Old Testament, the high priest would have to make sure that they were clean before they entered into the temple by an animal sacrifice. Then, the high priest would enter into the Holy of Holies once a year, or he would drop dead if he did not conduct the shedding of blood before entering the Holy of Holies. Yet, today, those in Jesus are in his presence. As God himself lives in us, we had 24-7 access to communicate with him. Without the Holy Spirit, we would not be able to know the things of God. Scripture states, but God has revealed them to us through his Spirit. The Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10. Understanding the things of God, this knowledge can only be received from his Spirit and cannot be attained based on how awesome and righteous we are in our own eyes. But because of his grace toward his children, we can receive. Sometimes we may feel like we're in the middle of the ocean swimming endlessly as our head is down trying to keep up with what people are telling us what we should be doing for God while swimming years go by and in the darkness you see a boat as a person is yelling get in the boat finally you hear the voice and climb into the boat with your exhausted heart soul mind and strength as you can barely get enough energy to say thank you to the person in the boat days go by as your life has been drained from years of swimming however suddenly you hear a child crying for help as he is swimming. The person driving the boat picks the little guy up. You receive strength to encourage the child and celebrate that they have been saved from the endless swimming. As you help the child, you begin to think that if you never climbed into the boat, you would have to still be swimming, not enjoying seeing this boy saved from their hopeless situation of endless swimming. Years go by. We are still in the boat as many more people have climbed into the ship, but the smaller boat has grown. Jesus told his disciples, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 4, verse 19. We are called to seek him, quote, For it is God who works in you, both to will and to do for his good pleasure. Philippians 2, verse 13. As we rest in him, then we can walk in his wisdom. Yet the world loves to distract us from seeking the Lord by confusing man with human-made religion, distracting them by trying to keep their lives busy enough to feel like they are worthy enough to be accepted by God and man. The Holy Spirit, God himself, lives in you. Do not fear man. Keep drawing close to God. Your eyes on him, as he will do amazing things in us and through us for his glory. In Christ, we do not have to bow down to the demands of our flesh, but freedom is in the Spirit. In the book of Romans writes, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Romans 8, verses 15 through 16.